Hey, y'all, this is Jamie with Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby, presented by Ashley. Yes, today on our episode, we have Courtney LaCourt. She is known as Cheese Gal, if you're big on mm-hmm. Instagram. Um, she makes beautiful cheese boards for all the celebrities in town that rolled into um, having her own shop, which she yes. is actually closed and talked about what she's going to do next. Um, she also shared a lot of personal stories about um, kind of a scary incident with yes. her daughter at when she was born. And so we think it's a great episode and we hope you enjoy it. I feel like I'm a little bored tonight. I feel like I could use some fun. I will take over the city, yeah, baby. For my lead, everybody get ready. All my girls are with me tonight. Let's turn it up now. On today's episode of Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby, we have Courtney LaCourt, also known as Cheese Gal. Oh my gosh, what an introduction. <laughs> she turned her passion of making cheese boards and hosting mm. into a blossoming business and now she's doing a bit of a pivot away from her cheese shop so we're really excited to talk to you today thanks for being here thank you for having me yeah. I'm so very excited I, it's, it always cracks me up to be introduced as cheese gal <laughs> but it's really what is the light bulb it's, moment for people I know I how love did you it. come up with that name Honestly, a good friend of mine, um, you might know her, Shannon Ford. She's an influencer on Instagram. Okay, yes. We were sitting at Tin Roof uh, the weekend before I got my first, like, cheese board gig. Uh Uh-huh. We had a cocktail napkin out. She goes, we have to come up with a business name. And I was like, well, she was like, okay. So we start writing down all these different names to come up with ideas. And I think... uh, one of them was Nashville Cheese Lady, and we were like, I'm not knitting. I don't I have I was about hats. to say, that's exactly what it sounds I, like. <laughs> yeah, that yes. was not going to work. And we're like, Nashville Cheese Gal. Girl, gal, gal, yeah. And so it kind of Cute. just came up I like that. that. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. so good. But it then stuck. you switched to, you took Nashville out yep. as soon as. Like, we took Nashville out because okay. I was like, maybe one day I'll have either multiple stores right. or I'll have something that needs to be not just Nashville specific. And yeah. it really opened up the door is truly for so many different things that have happened since then. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Okay, well, we'll get more, like, back on that topic. But tell us, like, kind of, like, your history, background, how you got to Nashville. Chris, my husband, Mm -hmm. brought me to Nashville. I've been here nine years, I think, this year. Love it. Could never imagine going back to Dallas as much as I love Dallas. Is that where you're originally from? Yeah, he and I are both Dallas uh, natives. That's where my daughter was born. Oh, my gosh, In Denton, Texas. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I, it'll always have a special place in my heart, but this is definitely home now. Yeah. yeah. Did you go um, to school together? Girl, back in the day before I did cheese boards, I thought I was going to be a singer songwriter. Oh, no kidding. Uh huh. And Chris played guitar on the little EP that I put together. Oh, cool. And so he and I met briefly, and then we were just friends on Twitter. This was before Instagram, before Facebook uh-huh. really was a thing mm-hmm. for anyone that wasn't in college. <laughs> and so MySpace, uh, yeah, except the MySpace <laughs> days, top yeah. eight, hundred um, percent. And I don't know, gosh, three, four years later, he came back in town because he had just moved here, and we had a group of like five or six people that were so, all we were all supposed to go to dinner, and they all canceled except for him. So that oh, was our wow. first unofficial oh, cute. first day. Oh, yeah, that's it awesome. was really cute. So anyway, oh. serendipity. All that to say, <laughs> but you know what's interesting is even back then I was making cheese boards before oh. they were like. A thing. A thing, a thing and well, like you, trendy. I mean, I would argue you made them a thing. Oh my God. Stop. Because your, once your Instagram started, it was like everyone was like, go to this account. It's so crazy. And uh-huh. basically like copy it. Yeah. It, <laughs> it blew up so fast. But to go back to your question, yeah. I first started making cheese boards when I was around 15. My godmother, who's like the most fabulous, entertaining hostess guru, like she's amazing. I was having a sleepover with her one night. I looked at her. I said, her name was Care. I said, tell me how to do this. I'm like drinking sparkling apple juice at 15 and we have this beautiful cheese board and she's just doing all these just like things. I'm like, teach me. She goes, a couple of things. Always have a bottle of chilled champagne in your fridge one day when you can drink and then have mozzarella and grapes and crackers and olives and I'll show you how to put it together. She was like, if you can make something that's delicious, look pretty, Mm -hmm. that's what we're going for. That's what's Mm. impressive and it also feeds your guests, you know? And so I started, I don't know, learning... Uh, ways to up my cheese board game over the next five, six years. And then before I knew it, I was like the go-to person in my friend group or for family. Mm-hmm. Right. I was doing friends' weddings and baby showers. I would do these huge cheese spreads. Oh, wow. Cool. And then there was one night my husband used to tour. Um, he was home and I made a cheese board for dinner. And I said, 
would somebody pay for this? <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's brilliant. And so that's kind of how the idea came about. And then nice. I somehow landed my first gig. It was a, for an artist named Lauren Daigle at the Ryman. Oh, I love Lauren Daigle. Yeah. Oh. She's amazing. Oh, so um, cool. I did her pre-show cheese boards. So what the, year was green room. what year was this? 2019. Okay, so March it's only, of 2019. It's, it's only been, been a few years. years. Mm-hmm. That's insane. It's insane. I thought it'd been ad- longer. Wait, were, were you advertising? How did she know? So I didn't even have an Instagram devoted to cheese boards. I would post pictures of my boards on my personal account, and somehow I forget the story, but a mutual friend that worked for her knew a friend that sent her a picture, and I got a phone call from an unknown number and I somehow answered it for whatever reason. Yeah. She's like, hi, I help manage Lauren and we just saw your cheese boards on Instagram. Do you have a business? We would love to. And I was like, oh my God. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> oh it's so funny. And then a couple of days later, I'm leaving the Ryman and I call Shannon. And I go, uh-huh. I did it. I dropped it off. She goes, girl, get your Instagram handle. Let's get some pictures up. She goes, that's you have amazing. 30 minutes I'm about to post about you. And then that's when it all changed. I had like 3,500 so followers in the first 24 hours, wow. and I've never had a lull since then. So that's that right how it there. started. That's so smart to hurry yeah. up and get your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, grab the handle, well, post your pictures. And you had high end clients who were probably posting, and so yeah. like, they had a lot of followers. It was a ripple effect. Yeah. For that's sure. That's amazing. Because now really you have lucky. how many Instagram? Oh, 95,000, I think. Yeah, that's wow. insane. It's just how Nashville is as a community. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. people have asked, like, do you think that this would have worked the way that it? has here anywhere else and I I don't know mm-hmm. yeah just because our community is so we all support each other and yeah. shout each other out I never had to ask anyone to post yeah right. I just would I gifted a lot of boards at the beginning just to kind of get my name out there and mm-hmm. they yeah. would post and then their friends would follow me and yeah. hire me and then they it just was this effect that was that's a really whirlwind, dynamic. Though, it was crazy to happen in the last three years. And yeah. you have two <sighs> daughters. Yes. We should mention because you, <laughs> yes. you are not busy. Yeah. At I'm, all. I'm traumatized <laughs> yes. from the first year and a half of being in business. That's for sure. Yeah. I had my little one and it was all just me. How old are your daughters? Charlotte, my oldest, is four, and my youngest just turned a year in March. Oh, so, crazy. I mean, I'm in the thick of it. <laughs> well, really am. Okay, we have to mention your eldest is the oh one gosh, that the called beautiful man. Coach Vrabel a beautiful man and made the news. Yes. That's how you and I met. That's how we <laughs> met. I will self-admittedly tell you I am not a huge – I don't know anything about sports. I don't know yeah. players' names, co- even coaches' names. Uh-huh. But Charlotte loves getting into the mail. She'll, like, draw over the water bills. It, anyway, so we, we get a <laughs> Nashville Edit magazine in, right? Mm-hmm. So she's in the mail. I'm cooking dinner. I can hear her, like, flipping through the magazine. And all of a sudden, I hear her say, oh, what a beautiful man. And I'm like, <laughs> she was three at the time. Let's keep in mind. <laughs> and I know my daughter. She is so funny. I hear her say something funny, and I pick up my phone immediately. And I know just to... I got this goal. Keep it rolling. Yeah. So that's the first thing I did naturally because I'm Kris Jenner. (laughs) I pick up my phone (laughs) and she's sitting there. Oh, what a beautiful man. And she's mom. I got to find he's a beautiful man. I'm like, (gasps) and that's when you see her open up, find Mike and she's petting his face kisses. I love it. And I'm like, what is happening? But I still had no idea who it was. Right. I didn't know. I should have. And I didn't. So I post it to my Instagram and it like blows mm-hmm. up in uh-huh. the next 12 hours by, by the next morning. I mean, so many DMs. And then Taylor texts me and goes, send me that video. I'm sending this to a uh, coach. And that's when I realized it was <laughs> like, it was. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then one thing yeah. turned the, and Mike actually, so he was so sweet. He sent me a text later that day and goes, please tell your daughter she's beautiful too. And so then I told her and she really thought that, that was so, so she goes, sweet. I'll just call him Michael. And I was like, <laughs> oh no, you got a handful. Well, that's a, somebody I sent know. it to me and I immediately sent it to Jen, Mike's <laughs> wife. And I was like, you have got to see this and she she about died oh that was God. the first time she saw it and yes. i think she contacted you as she well. did she and i dm'd i was like i'm so sorry <laughs> my three-year-old's coming after your husband it's not a threat i promise that is no. so funny and, and she also likes on the to news, be yeah. in a garden yeah. right yes i don't know where she gets any of her know, personality it's that. really you know she said she's so funny she she's wants to be so on a garden yeah anything yeah. in front of the camera does she, she like likes. to cook 
loves to cook. Yeah. And she gets a lot from her dad, too. He's been so good about being hands-on with her in the kitchen. She's been, you know, cracking eggs, making scrambled eggs since she was little. So yeah. I, it's naturally now she's like, well, I can be on TV and do that. That's oh, totally. That wig she wears. The wig. Oh, that's so funny. It sends me. Well, I will say, the first time I met you was at a Soho House event. Yes. Remember the one right before COVID? Yep. And I, I just remember that. being like, gosh, Courtney's so cool. And, like, oh, you do have this, like, presence where I'm like, you're totally going to be on TV one day, like a star That's for what sure. I'm, it's what I'm manifesting. I want you, it so bad. You will. what you want to do. Yeah. Then? Yeah. So let's talk. So you opened a cheese shop mm-hmm. during COVID. It's yes. done phenomenally well. Mm-hmm. Still huge operation yes. now. But you've decided as this episode airs, mm-hmm. it will have shut down. So talk yes. to us about kind of like getting into that, the whirlwind of like, this business has only been around three years. So yeah. I'm sure you just were like, yes, yes, yes. And now you're like, ooh, yeah. let's see. What do I really want to do? <laughs> exactly. Like you said, it blew up so fast and became such a huge operation. I have 14 employees and I'm so blessed. And really, like, it's been one of the biggest joys of my life just to see this thing unfold that I I did, you know. And I kind of had to take inventory because I've been running at warp speed for the last three years. And I, I've always said that I have two parts of to what I do. There's the where we make and sell cheese boards and then there's like the Instagram personality or someone that is teaching you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And my passion has always lied Mm -hmm. with teaching you how to do it. In fact, as I've started Cheese Gal, I have people that are like, oh my God, is this just your dream come true to own a cheese board business? And I would always say, Actually, I always, I've just loved entertaining since I was a little, I mean, I would host my high school friends at my mom. I would put on these parties or these elaborate. So that's where it all stems from. It all comes from a love of teaching you how to do it and, and entertaining. And so in order for me to put more energy and focus I have to say no to this and mm-hmm. I'm blessed to be able to go hey this gave me the platform right. yeah. to where I can now teach you how to do it and put right. all of my focus here so I'm really excited someone the other day was like oh my god I'm so sorry your business is going under and I'm like <gasps> like no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> no I, it's a decision you it's made. a decision yes. and I also have two small babies right. and I just it's not sustainable to keep going the way that I'm going right. I, I have to just go okay yeah what am I passionate about? Mm-hmm. This. Good for you. I want to put it all there now. Good for you for Thank doing you. that. It's yes. hard. I bet it is. It's really, it's kind of sad, yeah. but there's, well, some, I have so much peace. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. great. I know. I think it's hard. It's like you, I think sometimes as a female, you kind of get lost in like, I'm cheese gal. I have a shop yes. and this is it. But like money comes in. Like yeah. are you, if you're working 80 hours a week right. and making whatever it is, it's mm-hmm. just like the notoriety sometimes like gets in the way of like what you actually want. Exactly. And I like applaud you for Thank calling you. it and being yeah. like, I still love this. It's still something still I want to do. It's still my passion, but it's just mm-hmm. not in this way. Yes. Yeah. And my husband has been so um, supportive and instrumental uh, this whole journey really for me. And a couple of days ago, I was kind of having a day. I'm like, oh, my gosh, am I doing the right thing? And he goes, honey, don't you remember, like, th- th- this whole time, yeah. this is what you have wanted to do. And now you get to, I'm like, yeah, but I'm closing my business. He goes, no, 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 you're just closing the catering yeah. side. Mm-hmm. You're Another still very much opening. so, he goes, now you get to be cheese gal. Right. right. You're not, the company doesn't have to be, yeah. oh, this is a retail store. So It's like one of those things, like with, with John, for instance. Mm-hmm. He had to walk through all these certain doors Mm -hmm. before he could get to where he is now. And we actually had me McCormick on the on this show. It was the same thing for her. Mm -hmm. She had her restaurant in Pinewood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when she closed it, it was a gut wrench. That was her baby. Mm -hmm. But then now it's opening other doors and things that she couldn't do before kudos to you thank you yeah i'm really i'm excited i know so what so i know you do you do all the how-tos which i watch like every night i'm just like ignoring my kids watching them (laughs) like the dirty martinis the bloody mary the journey we should have had some stuff here why didn't i bring (laughs) total use a bloody mary right now (laughs) Listen, you guys might have to be my taste testers because I yes. have not landed. Part two. The rest of right. I need Cheese to get the part, part two. two. Yes. I'll make you the dirty martini first and then I'll make you the bloody yes. Mary because it'll taste better. You know, that's how we it's met like was over drink. Is that it? That's how oh I knew. God, cute. That's how I knew she's the love of my she's life. The one. She's the one. She's the one. That's how we became best friends. Yes. <laughs> I know some of your tips and tricks for making like the perfect cheese board because I was yes. at your like, yeah. class. Yep. Um, and I think a couple are like, 
cutting the cheeses so people yes. aren't having to cut. Like I yep. loved everything. Can you give us some tips for mm. people making them at home? Totally. I think the first thing to always remember, if it is pretty, but it doesn't taste good, miss the mark. If it tastes good, but isn't pretty, also miss the mark. You're always thinking of how can I elevate this? Can I take cheese out of the wrapper and just lay it down you sure could mm -hmm. but it's not visually going to give you that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the yeah the yeah it's like i know you don't even need I words say, yeah, yeah, yeah i'm like just, say it. <laughs> I just shimmy <laughs> but truly so you just learn these little tips on how to step up your cheese board so like you just mentioned it's the cutting of the hard cheeses how many times have you gone to a party yeah Where th there's a big block of cheddar a big knife mm -hmm. and guess what Nobody's going to touch it because you want to be the first one. Yeah, guilty you, of doing that. Yeah, I that's know, okay. But not after today. Not, not after, after today. today. <laughs> so pre cut your hard cheeses. Mm -hmm. A, you can arrange it in a more interesting, pretty way. It gives you texture, layer, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But it also makes for easy grazing. It's about making it accessible for your guest. So cutting hard cheeses. Also putting a, an assortment of like different milks, cow's milk, goat's milk, sheep's mm -hmm. milk also gives you different flavor profiles mm -hmm. and folding your meat, folding oh, your yes. salami. See, that looks so <laughs> difficult. It's no. so you do easy. It so fast. Girl, it's so easy. So like any let's uh, thinly sliced round piece of salami or charcuterie, uh -huh. it's like this, right? You fold it in half. I'm okay. doing it. I'm folding <laughs> salami. You do it in half and then you fold it again. And that's, that's all. It, it just oh, gives you this it. little like, and then you like, put and them then all you together. put them all together, and it, and makes, it makes this. A, yeah, it makes it look. Mm, does, interesting. It, does it taste any different? No. You could take but it out and pretty. put it down. That's okay, but it's pretty, and it mm. also again goes back to it's easy for your guests to pick up and grab. They're not yes. like trying to pull it apart from the other. Meat. Yeah. Well, and another so thing, just little things like that. You taught me is like add a color yes. because I feel like sometimes I would go like get the cheese and the nuts mm -hmm. and the apricot or whatever fruit, and then yeah. it was like all one color yeah, yeah, yeah. or like one tone yeah. and I was like mm -mm. yeah <laughs> fine fresh seasonal produce honestly that's where I get my inspiration for boards it's uh -huh. what is seasonal in What's season in right season? now yeah yeah so we have berries which are so beautiful adds texture like she said adds color mm -hmm. add them around your plate make it symmetrical and it just brings your board to life and my last tip that I'll give you and this is one of my favorite parts of the uh, board <laughs> making process, fresh herbs. It's like putting mm. a bow on a present. Mm. So I don't know, go out to your little herb garden, snip some rosemary or some thyme or that would be whatever Kroger. you have. <laughs> hey, there you go. Listen, I can't keep herbs alive. I'm out here talking like I have an herb garden. No. I don't. Me I can I kill them all. Yeah. <laughs> Even the green ones that they say nobody can kill that. I can I kill, kill them. <laughs> no, I do too. The, like the cactus and succulents, same. Go to Kroger, grab the little packet of herbs and put it on the plate. And I'm just telling yeah. It just adds this freshness and vibrance, and it's just so pretty. That's what's going to set it Does apart. it matter what herb or no. whatever? It just has to be pretty. Just something that's edible. Are you actually yeah. going to eat it? No. no. But just make sure it's case. edible. I always have a hard time if you want to add, like, a jelly or a mustard mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Do you put them in, like, contain? Like, how do you yeah, do that? Yeah, totally. Get, like, those cute little ramekins or, like, a little bowl. Yeah. And okay. just sp – or leave it in the jar. You could do yeah, that, too. Just take the lid off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But there's, like, just little ways you can step up your cheese plate. And that's why I love offering workshops and virtual know, master right? classes. Are you still going to yeah. do those? A hundred percent. Okay. So yeah. are you going to get out your own space or you do it outside your home? I think I mean I'll, inside your I'll home. probably find different places around town, maybe mm -hmm. like different restaurants or whatever that like want to yeah. partner with me. Event spaces, yes. something in LNL. I don't know. Just yeah. like different places yeah. around town. And I'm actually doing my first tour and it's the Dirty Like the Cumberland yeah. oh. cheese and martini tour. Okay, oh, where is that? I around? know. We have so to go. All right, we, I just on. did my first one in Nashville a couple of weeks ago, uh -huh. and then we're doing our next one in Dallas, oh, and cool. then it looks like we might go to Chicago or New York oh next. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so this is what I, I – Where did you go amazing. in Nashville? I had it at my shop, or oh, I had it uh, okay. in the bagel shop, actually, gotcha. across the hall from my shop. It was so fun. So you taught was. them how to make yep. them? We okay. did the dirty martini, which, for those that don't know, I went on a – bit of a journey of a, a journey. lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last July, I had just had, let's see, my youngest was maybe four or five months old. And so you can't, uh, with two kids, you can't go out to yeah. eat every night. It's not, mm. well, I guess you could, but it's I don't. Enjoyable. No, it's not enjoyable. <laughs> messes up bedtime. But I just recently had a dirty martini at Sperry's over in Belmead. And I was like, Sperry's. this is everything I've wanted because mm -hmm. I used to order them and then I would never drink them. And Chris is like, I don't think it's your thing. I'm like, it's my thing. I really, it's, it's supposed to be my drink. He's like, but you never drink them. I'm like, I know. So I found the one that I liked. And then I was like, okay, I want to learn how to make this at home. Uh -huh. But then I quickly found it is not as easy as one would think. Mm -hmm. You can't just like 
take any recipe online because it I have a very like specific mm-hmm. taste. Yeah. Salt. Salt. <laughs> Lots of salt. I mean, y'all, I'm dirty, still dirty. like I wondered why I couldn't get my rings off. Um so I yeah, I made a martini every day for the month of July using different vodkas or I didn't drink the whole thing every day, but I just was trying Why to not? find the perfect <laughs> recipe. I know. We're pro drinking. Okay, same. Okay, good. I just like didn't know if it was a safe space. <laughs> there is no <laughs> reason to waste. Is. You no have waste. I knew I liked you guys. If you, you have guys. little kids. <laughs> yeah. Or oh, big kids. Or it, teenagers. Or no kids. <laughs> no kids. We promote. It's appropriate. <laughs> Love it. I arrived at the perfect dirty martini and it's a very specific recipe and I am telling you. I, okay, that's what I'll, I should have probably. And like chilled glass. Like it's the glass has, has to go The glass in has there? to be chilled. You have okay. to use the right olives, the right olive yeah. juice, just the rinse of vermouth and discard it. And the right vodka. It's very specific. It is. When and I tell I you it was a journey, that. it was a journey. And I filmed it all and put it on Instagram and it became came this movement truly <laughs> people don't even talk to me about cheese boards anymore like it's if they come up to me they're like the dirty martini I'm like I know <laughs> I know I feel like I had to ask you about cheese because, but I, but they know me now the, so we a follower of mine sent me this DM and she was like so what I think she was like my friends whenever we go out to restaurants we say I want it the color of the Cumberland River and I was like that that's, is that's exa- brilliant so now I used to always say from that yeah. dirty like the Cumberland because it describes how dirty you want the martini. Oh wow! So yes. we're doing a tour. I love where it. We make the martini like uh-huh. from start to finish. We stuff the olives with blue cheese. We do the whole thing, and then we make a cheese board to pair with that, and it's so fun. But you also do like, I mean, you're cooking dinners yeah. basically live like a lot of nights, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And the, everything looks delicious from like super simple recipes to more complicated, right? But I just love following it's it. It's so fun. My I husband know. is a really amazing cook like amazing and so he now we do these Sunday suppers together where we I mean we we cook every Sunday no matter what and it was his idea actually he's become quite the influencer husband yeah he's like shouldn't we tag so and so I'm like okay Okay. someone (laughs) he's He's like sponsor me (laughs) literally (laughs) he kills me so what does Chris do Chris is a producer and songwriter and country music so he used to tour for Dustin Lynch for like eight or nine years he was Uh his Uh, like right hand man guitar player Mm. and then when our uh, youngest actually I think I was pregnant with her that's when he started writing and then it's just I mean his career has also just taken off in the last couple of years he just had a second number one a month ago what was it um can you I forgot. I was like, like what, I don't know. what was the name? <laughs> uh, 23 by Sam Hunt. <gasps> oh, I nice. love that yeah. song. He just told me this morning he has three more singles coming to radio from different artists this summer. So Stop. Stop. That's so like cool. In the next it's amazing weeks. that both of your careers and yeah. Yeah, it just are starting to explode. We're All really blessed. Once. We're really blessed. And it's cool to see them overlap. Yeah. Because yeah. we're in very opposite <laughs> um, ends of the spectrum work-wise. Uh-huh. But but you do a lot of musician, like, yeah, cheese boards. My clients have been who he writes with or writes for. It's just, it's wild. That's cool. That's but how yeah. do you balance that? Do you have oh. help with the kids? Or um, do you just... Not a lot. Yeah. No. I have a teenager that babysits. Nice. Do you really? Yes. No, I... <laughs> she she loves it. desperate need. No, I'm she in desperate it. need. It's so hard. Um, <laughs> I need her, though. I know. Actually, I was, she's like, <laughs> move over. <laughs> no, I feel that. Are they in school, or do you have a nanny or mm-hmm. something? Mm-hmm. I have, like, a... Li- like a like 10 girls that I'll just text are you available and then when one says no I go to the next one it's Mm -hmm. like that but I am looking for like full time well probably part to full time Mm -hmm. because I just it's so hard Mm -hmm. I whenever the girls were younger I I had one Mm -hmm. I mean you you do and I'm a stay-at-home mom Mm -hmm. and at Mm -hmm. first I had such the mom guilt why why am I asking for help when I'm not technically like going into an office or anything but, I mean, you when they're it. three years apart, when they get to be, like, both doing activities, yep. mm-hmm. I felt bad because my second one, I felt like, was being pushed to the mm-hmm. side because the oldest was dancing, and Nashville is so spread out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. It's actually John that was like, you can't do this can't. by yourself, yeah. and I can't help you with my schedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I had one up. I mean, she still helps me, like, with my dogs. Wow. Yeah. But it's... I tell I know, everybody. Even, even like this Friday, I have, you know, like it's in last day of school and it's like there's a party at the preschool, but then there's a party at her school and like it's the same time and yep. we should be at both. So like thankfully Josh is flexible too, but I'm right. like, if we didn't have that. 
Yeah. It's a you lot. Know? It's so hard. And back to the mom guilt. It's like the day your kids are born, they also hand you a card <laughs> for mom guilt that goes yes. in your, it like doesn't matter. Absolutely. If you're at home, you have mom yeah. guilt. If, if you're, you're working, working. Yeah. yeah. If you're in the middle, it doesn't matter. On multiple levels. Yeah. I now like, <laughs> Taylor just had bunion surgery. And so she was down in the dumps about mm-hmm. a week later, you know, all, it, fun and games oh, are baby. over with. Oh, yeah. I don't like crutches anymore. I'm like, sorry, yeah. babe, you're on them for five more weeks, oh, you know? Gosh. Wow. And so I'm texting her best friend going, Taylor's upset. Can you dig into this a little bit deeper? Yeah. And she's like, she's fine, Miss Jamie. And I'm like, no, something's wrong. No, something's, something's wrong. wrong. I need you. I need yeah. you to help me. And it's, they're like, it's like the heart outside of your chest. And it they just crazy. run around. You're like, oh my God. I mean, I can't, I started the other day getting emotional thinking about my girls going away to college. They're four <laughs> and one. And I'm oh. like, <laughs> and I just can't imagine if they Let ever you. leave. Not, yeah. Nashville, yes. I'll die. Mm-hmm. Like, n- I won't be okay. I'm two years away from that. Right oh my now. god! No, Jamie. and it is such y'all. Like, I'm I'm getting emotional thinking about it. For me, it's not even like my kids are good. I can be there for them, but then it's like you're supposed to have the perfect house, yeah. everything oh. organized. Like the whole it's it's like all of it. And then I also work, and then you got to look cute, and you got to do this, and you got to be social, yep. and your friends yep. want to go to happy hour, and I'm just oh my like. Gosh. How? Yeah. How do I we know. do it? And also go to therapy and work out every day. And yeah. Uh, it's yeah. like the list mm-hmm. is just like. Eat well. I'm like, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's I, a lot. I, I, these, the influencers, mm. I, I have a hard time sometimes yeah. watching. Yeah. Like uh, Landon is a friend of mine. I admire what she She's does amazing. so much. But she gives me anxiety. <laughs> 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 I tell her that. I just. I'm like, I can't. Yeah, she's she Wonder is. Woman. Oh, my she gosh. She really is. And some days I can watch it. Some days I'm like, skip. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like, I can't. I can't. Yeah. yeah. She's amazing. She oh, is. my gosh. She really does it all. She I know. Is. It's, it's incredible. But does it. I'm like, so how do we do it all? I guess we don't. I saw this amazing um, TikTok video of Shonda Rhimes. I think her name. She does all the shows like on ABC and yeah, Scandal okay. and all that. Grey's yeah. Anatomy is hers. And she's giving a speech at a college graduation, and she says something to the extent of, you know, someone asked me the other day how I do it all. Mm -hmm. And the truth is I don't. Mm -hmm. If I am missing one of our actors last day on set, that means I'm with my daughter on her first swim lessons, or I'm missing my daughter's ballet recital because we can't do it all. And I think there's a beauty and surrendering to going, I can't, so I'll just do the best that I can. I'll prioritize. Mm -hmm. Some days I'll work out. Other Mm -hmm. days it's important for me to sleep in until whenever Ellie will sleep in too. You know, I think it's just this, yeah, we just do the best we can. Yeah. Well, and, and for try me, not to beat I've like up. finally understood that like not everything is going to be in balance yes. at the same time. No. Like sometimes I feel like a great mom and wife, but yep. like work is suffering. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like a good friend and works great, but yep. like home life. And so it's yeah. like, but it's our laundry never pile all is in up balance, yes. you know, it's yeah. like, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. At school, oh, yeah. like they'll put all the moms on a text chain and I immediately am like, I'm adding my husband. Yeah. He is like 50-50 partner with yes. me. But we're just expected to be the ones that are like at every function, right? at the night stuff, making right. the mom friends at school. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's just, you just can't do it all. If a kiddo is sick, oh, it's Pick us up. staying home or us, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my do you oh miss Dallas at all? No. No. Not at all. It's so... It's in fact, Chris and I just got back from being in Dallas briefly on Saturday, and every time that I'm there, it feels familiar, but it no longer mm-hmm. feels like home. And it's one of those things where I almost get anxiety when I'm there because the thought of having never left and not having my right. it's, it's the strangest new feeling, my new or life or here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it gives me anxiety almost to be there. But it's always good to see our family because both of us grew up there, and so we get to kind of like see everybody at the same time. And totally, but I do. I there are parts of it that I love. Yeah, parts of it I miss, like the Tex Mex. Totally oh, miss that. Oh so gosh, hundred percent. Papacitos. Oh my yes. gosh. Yes, oh, it's my nice. favorite. Where? What part of Dallas? Grew up in live? Plano. Okay. Born. In, I mean, I was there till I was gosh okay. eighteen or so. We were yeah. in Argyle. Oh yeah. yeah, I know where that yeah, is. Yeah, nice. we were in Argyle for about three and a half years, and oh, then wow. my sister was in Highland Village, mm-hmm. and then my parents moved to Canton, Texas. Oh yeah, the best I, monthly. I have never been. <gasps> you never went. I've never oh been. Oh my god, Jamie. It's it's and so good. We moved away. My sister ended up moving to Canton, and she's still there now. My mom's in Nashville. Oh my so, gosh, so now you have family. Yeah. My mom moved here too. Oh, she did. did. Oh, Oh, yeah. The second I had 
her first grandbaby, yeah. she was like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was so great because nice. Chris was still on the road and uh, yeah, it you was need tough. her. Yeah. What part of town are you in? Now we're in East Nashville, but we're, we're building right now in Bellevue. Oh, nice. I'm like right by, we're right by Innsworth. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like on that line of Bellevue, Bellmead, West. Yeah. I don't know. That's a beautiful know. area. It's so pretty. The houses and the property over yes. there. I love it. It's gorgeous. It's just too far from school. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. To FRA. So Speaking of school, I don't know. Charlotte goes to kindergarten in August. Girl, you better start You better start looking. touring. Everybody tells me. I did not know. Yes. I know. And I know my chances of private school probably aren't happening this year right start touring now oh yeah they will you don't for august oh wait for Mm. this year oh no you're done you're out well can you hold her back (laughs) oh could you imagine yeah but could you imagine char oh yeah (laughs) she she turns five right uh, August 4th. So she's like okay. on that line. You're doing, so, so you may be able my to. My daughter is August 1st and we went ahead oh. and sent her at five. Yeah. I'm going to send. Sh- she's so social. She's yeah. so smart. I, that's how we were. And you kind of yeah. know your kid, but I mm-hmm. will say she is the very youngest in the yeah. whole grade. Do you feel like there's any negative, like, yes, neg- like negative Yeah. She's not quite that. there. I think she'll catch up as she gets older. Cause you know, okay. like the differences become smaller, but yeah, she's definitely like sports wise at first. Mm-hmm. I was like, come on basketball's yeah. coming at your end let's get with it you know and then just she's a little bit you know she's just not as yeah. there but yeah. she'll be fine she'll catch up and do be you great. wish you would have held her back a little bit no because I can't imagine her in mm-hmm. kindergarten right yeah. now mm-hmm. she's so tall yeah she is tall oh. she's like the tallest in her grade or like she one of the tallest tall. in her grade I love mm-hmm. that. so I think that would have like I wouldn't change it but again yeah. like Kids are turning eight, and she's not even seven Yeah, in her grade. I will tell you, two of Taylor's very best friends, they w- were August babies, uh-huh. and they laugh and say, we're the baby. They're completely fine. Yeah. Yeah. They're okay, that makes me feel better. Fine. Totally. I yeah, was almost here. I was an October baby, and at the time, they didn't have the cutoff. Oh, so I went yeah. to school at four years old. Wow. Oh, fine. wow. And she's You're like, great. I'm great. I'm a queen. Honestly, no, the little public school in our yeah. area is it's great. Yeah. So yeah. I'll send her there and then maybe for first yeah. grade like I would definitely private. start even now. Yeah. Even for first grade. Oh I would start touring. I don't even know where ready. to send her. They're all I don't good. know anything. We're we'll send you. We'll send you Put me Ainsworth. on a group text. Okay. Yeah. Do you yeah, like yeah. it? Yeah. Love it. Love it. And if you're okay. right there. You should document it on Instagram because I do feel like people don't True. know the Nashville school mean, system is yeah. crazy. It's crazy. And, and I yeah. told this to some friends, they had similar reactions <laughs> as you guys. And they were like, quitting, no, like two years ago. I was like, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> no, know how I supposed to. Happened. It, because of COVID, because mm. of and so the people, Im- moved here too. people moving here. Yeah. It's been absolutely insane. Oh my god. Well, and then because Metro me was shut down like during COVID yeah. for so long I think a lot of people moved to private private yeah. schools they, didn't, they were still in yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. you're fine she's I know. gonna all be of a sudden, fine she's like I need my marches immediately I was gonna say immediately leaves here to make a uh, Bloody Mary <laughs> okay <laughs> holy moly but okay th- it'll be fine so what's like <laughs> the dream now okay cheese the cheese shop's closed yeah. and you're like like sky's the limit manifest it put it out Food there network. what is it really yeah your own show yeah <gasps> No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. It's been my dream since I was a little girl. You can do it. I used yeah. to pretend. the personality, the looks, the everything. I know. Oh my God, stop dreaming. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> no, that's been the dream. Wow. I mean, y'all, I was five years old pretending to be Martha Stewart with two teddy bears, both named Dan. I don't know why. And I would, <laughs> I would start. The hey, beautiful buddy. Dan. <laughs> yeah, and I would go, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. And I would teach you how to make spaghetti. Like that. So that's why when that's people have it. said this whole time, like, is, was the dream the cheese shop? Oh, my God. I'm like, no, my dream was to be oh. Martha Stewart. Yeah. So to be able to kind of try to go that oh, direction. Yeah. Oh, that's and amazing. I was telling, using this example last night, not that I'm Ina. I am not Ina. <laughs> Nobody can be Ina, okay? But Ina had a shop in the Hamptons. It was called the Barefoot Contessa. Oh. So this is her story. I and then, at, oh, God, I, I loved it. Same. So she closed the shop. And became Ina Garden as we know her. Mm. So I feel like, like you're on the same path. Yes. And yes. obviously we have very different approaches to like how we teach you how to do it. I hope that I um, come across as relatable and people feel like they can do it. it taking the uh, intimidation factor yes. out of making yeah. a delicious, beautiful meal or a delicious, totally. beautiful cheese board or a cocktail. Or yeah. t- t- teaching you how to set a table. I love dinner parties. Chris and I are like. Have you, your agents put you in touch with? Not quite. We've done different things. I am um, in a conversation right now with a streaming network Mm -hmm. to to do my own, like, little short form, not 
sure that that's going to be what we do next, but I'm going to start doing kind of my own thing and see put it on Instagram, want. put it on YouTube, start there, and then we'll go, you know, I we'll see what say, happens. It feels but happen. it, I yeah. feel it. It feels happen. like you're do. already it. doing it, too. Yeah. So it's like just getting the right, right. connection mm-hmm. to be like, you're perfect. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Anna and and you're such a love. Like, yeah. I mean, it, seriously, I feel like we've known you forever. And I just want to hug you. Thank you. You do. You have, that like I said, lot. the glow, the personality. Mm-hmm. And Thank then you. you have your little mini me. Oh. That will be your uh, sidekick. <laughs> your she sidekick. would love it. She would, she love, would it. love it. I took her to a checkup recently at the doctor and the doctor walks in the door and she says, hi, Charlotte, how are you? And, her first words were, I'm great. Did you see me on the news? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's that what I'm up against. So but she's the best. Cute. She yeah. is so precious. She's a hoot. So we've been talking a lot about Little Miss Charlotte. Well, yes. Let's go into a little bit, if you don't mind, sure. about your your baby. Yeah, and Ellie. I Ellie. saw mm-hmm. on Instagram, mm-hmm. you're trying to have more awareness around mm-hmm. what happened with her. So yes. Yes. Can you explain that? Yeah. 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 I'm so glad you asked because I feel like this is such an important thing for us as parents or not even as parents, just Mm -hmm. as human beings in general to know that you are your only advocate or in this case, your child's only advocate. We have a tendency just to trust um, anybody in the healthcare system. And don't get me wrong, they're incredible Mm -hmm. nurses and doctors. Mm -hmm. However, they're still human beings too. And where there's human beings, there's human air. Yes. So long story short, with both of my girls, actually, I had something called gestational diabetes where it's hereditary. It's not because Mm -hmm. I was eating bad. It's just when I get pregnant, my body goes into full-blown diabetes Mm -hmm. and I have to check my blood sugar four times a day, alter my diet like crazy. Mm -hmm. But I was having really high Mm -hmm. uh, blood sugar throughout my pregnancy and it was a little bit difficult to manage. Well, the second that they cut the umbilical cord, you don't have it anymore. It's like the wildest thing. But thank God I knew this type of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, There's a protocol in place Mm -hmm. for mothers that have gestational diabetes for their kids Mm -hmm. to basically monitor the baby's blood sugar the first 24 to 48 hours of life to make sure that once that cord is cut, like I mentioned, that their blood sugar doesn't tank because they're used to making up for it in utero, right? I knew that because I had Charlotte. And they would come in every few hours the first day or two and say, hey, her blood sugar is great. She's doing great. So I'm like, okay. So I knew going into having Ellie, that's what was going to happen. Well, when I went into the hospital, my labor and delivery nurse brought me these snacks, which, by the way, did you know you can eat now? when you're that you can like snack when you're in labor what? No. that was like remember what? like last time I could only have popsicles and ice <laughs> so I was like this is great I but she brought that. I know it's like a new thing but she brought me like a bunch of cookies and stuff and I was like I can have that she goes well what do you mean I said well I have gestational diabetes she was like oh I didn't know that okay glad you said that and I'm like that's kind of odd yeah. well Weird. uh-huh and that should have been my first thing but again you're in a place that you just trust surely that's in my paperwork and you're in that's labor. like a, I'm a high risk right. technically like yeah. So I have Ellie, and again, once that cord is cut, you no longer have diabetes. So I sent Chris immediately to get me Krispy Kreme donuts and Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> I had been dreaming about both of those. So he was like, I'm on it. Ellie is maybe two hours old. I'm now just left in the room with, like, the nurse that, you know, she's taking, getting her all cleaned up and whatever. Yeah. And I ask her, like, hey, what was her blood sugar? And she goes, Again, what do you mean? And yeah. I'm like, well, I have gestational diabetes. I had to say that that 10, 15 yeah. times. Oh, my god! Different people the entire time that I was at the hospital. And she goes, I'm so glad you said that. Let me check. And she, just for, I'll throw some numbers at you. For point of reference, blood sugar for babies needs to be above 60. When mm-hmm. it's below 55, they do a sugar drip treatment to mm-hmm. kind of reset their pancreas. It's not a big deal. It happens all the time. But she goes, well, her know. blood sugar is 56. I'm like, and I knew the cutoff was 55. And I'm like, okay. She goes, don't worry. They're going to be monitoring this. So I'm like, okay, good. Well, over the course of the next two days, I kept asking over and over and over. Everything's great. Oh, she's great. How are her levels? She's great. Blood sugar's good. Yep. Blood sugar's great. Our uh, healthcare provider doesn't do hospital visits. So I had the pediatrician uh, the from the hospital. Yeah. Even came to look at her throughout. So keep. There's a lot of people that oh, missed they're this. in yes. your room all the time, every, and every second. The amount of people I told I had gestational diabetes. Wow. The, so, all that to say, I had been noticing that she was really sleepy, and 
I just kept going, something doesn't feel right. It's been four hours. She's not even, we're having to wake her up to feed. At, at one point, you guys, I have, I'm holding her, trying to nurse. My husband, my nurse, the lactation nurse, we're all going, come on, baby, wake up. And she was so sleepy. Mm-mm. We go to leave. Y'all, we are, I always get chills when I tell this part. I have packed our bags. We have the car seat in the room. We are getting ready to leave. And we had just gotten this new nurse. And she, thank God for her, truly. And she goes, and she has her paperwork. She goes, listen, I know that you guys are parents, but I love to go over this just to refresh your memory. If you see any of these things with your child, give us a call because something could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, she gets this part where she goes, sorry, uh, if she's really sleepy. And I go, that's Ellie. She goes, yeah, but this would be blood sugar related. I go, no, that's exactly what I'm concerned about. By the way, nobody has told me her exact blood sugar numbers. Can you tell me what they are? Her face goes white, (gasps) sheet white. She goes, what are you talking about? (gasps) Again, I have gestational diabetes and I've been asking about her blood sugar. And she just looks at us and she goes, oh my God, nobody's been checking her. What? And she looks, she shows us, she goes, that is nowhere in your file. She goes, in fact, she pulls up the record sheet, which is in Ellie's file. So it was not in my fault that I had gestational diabetes, obviously. But in Ellie's file, there was the record sheet of her blood sugar and only that one just the 50 the one mm -hmm. and she goes and it's blank nobody's (gasps) so she runs i'll never forget this as long as i live chris is holding ellie i'm sitting on the bed she runs to get the blood meter comes back pricks her little heel and i see my husband's face just and i she goes this can't be right this this can't be right She, she does it again she rips my baby from my husband's arms and runs out of the room runs and I am sitting there about to leave like what and you're happened? what just happened yeah. and Chris goes honey it was 26 and I <gasps> we, we both start losing our minds oh my god for 30 minutes nobody was there and I call my mom I am hysterical I am inconsolable my mom thought the baby died because I was so I mean you can imagine I just was losing it otherwise perfectly healthy child we should not be in this situation right and the NICU doctor who Oh I could cry talking about her. I love her. She comes in the room and goes, um, okay, Ellie is in the NICU. We have her on emergency, uh, a dextro strip. We don't know how this happened, but all that I can tell you, it's so maddening. It's so maddening. She goes, all that I can tell you is thank God you ask the questions that you ask because her blood sugar was so low and it was dropping. It was even lower when they checked her again upstairs. So it was dropping. And just so people understand what can happen with low blood sugar with infants, brain damage, seizures, they could die. And she told us that the way her blood sugar was dropping, she would have died. Oh my God. If you had gone home. To think. Yeah. Oh, it geez. is. It. It's one of those things that just... <laughs> You're like For a, a hypochondriac, <laughs> that is not yeah. a good thing because I uh, was right that one time, you know, so I've had some trauma to work through. But all that to say, she responded beautifully, so oh quickly. God. But part of the thing was we didn't know if any brain damage had occurred because we did not. There was no so record of knowing. We had no idea how low for how long. Oh, my. So we were there for well, almost a week. What the hell with the hospital? Oh, my God. I mean, are you Y'all, suing them? I would be we so... Were we were in contact with an injury attorney basically because Ellie has no signs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, we normally you don't pay the attorney cause they get paid when you win they right. take on, he goes, there's just such a high risk with, it's just hard with malpractice. It is a hard lawsuit to win. And because yeah. she's okay, which is what we want at the end of the day, yes. we dropped it. We were like, it's not worth it, but talk yeah. about make you mad. Advocate. Kate. When yeah. when the admins came in a couple days later, we're still in the hot. We were there, I don't know, six days or something like that. The admins came in and gave this, this whole, we're so sorry. How did this happen? At the end, she offers, I'm thinking they're about to wipe our bill at the least. Yeah. Though, right. Uh, she's like, I'm, this, this, this can't take away what, you know, has oh happened. Lord. She hands me two $7.50 gift certificates to the cafeteria. Me? That's a slap in the face. I was so oh stunned. God. I looked at her and I was just like, oh my God. Like, read the room. Yes. Wow. That may be protocol. Read the room. 
I, I am hysterically crying. You're handing me fifteen dollars to go downstairs to the cafeteria. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my daughter almost died in your care. So I can't. I can't even listen, my my point of telling this story is you are your child's only advocate. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you feel something, just say something. At the very worst, you're wrong. Absolutely. And and, and everything's okay. Instincts. Yes. If I've learned anything through mm-hmm. this whole ordeal, it's okay. Now nah, I'm I'm speaking up. Yeah. I'm yes. gonna say something. And it's the same thing with you. Yeah. If you feel something is wrong in your body. I don't know if you know, but my daughter has type one diabetes. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. So that's why Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's she knows you know. what that means. Yeah, it's bad, and we had to be my daughter's advocate Mama. ten years ago. Yeah, and had to listen to our instincts. Mhm. Mhm. And she was diagnosed. Oh my God. Yeah. I had so no idea. <laughs> Did they say anything? Is she gonna have like? Is her pancreas okay? They told us that with that sugar drip, and this is why they said it. It's protocol for them to check because it's so easy to stabilize it it basically resets her pancreas and I I had such PTSD from this that I asked her pediatrician to still give me a a blood meter so I could check her and even though they swear they're like literally 98% of cases even when we have to the sugar drip they're gonna be okay but I still I mean yeah uh, for the next like she's tired for the first yes like oh I would be prick that poor baby's heel oh so that's why. I oh started. my god! I, I just want to ball. Oh. Well, so wow. thank you for sharing that. Yeah, we know it's hard and no something traumatic. And being to I am advocate is amazing. I am Using passionate about it. Yeah, I'm pa- and I finally spoke about it for the first time on my Instagram a couple of months ago, right before <laughs> Ellie's first birthday. Everyone was going, "Well, what happened?" And I never talked about it because we were in a lawsuit, yeah, and right. I couldn't you speak could. about it. I have never said the name of the hospital, but yeah. Um. Ugh. God. Well, she oh, is healthy. She's, yes, thank God. Yes. Yes. I'm yes, so, yes. oh, she is just Good. so delicious and sweet and just the chunkiest little baby. <laughs> and fiery. Oh. Oh. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank and, you, guys. And um, thanks for, like, talking through closing the shop oh and stuff. God. I think thank that's, like, yeah. such a good decision for you personally, obviously. I, I'm You're taking like, this one day at a time and following my gut as yeah. I've done this whole day. I'm like, you know what? It'll turn out the way it's supposed to. I yeah. feel a pull in this direction. I'm just going to do it. I yeah. love it. Thank That's you for so giving me the space to talk about it, too. Of Absolutely. I love it. And I can't wait to round two. Yes. That, that is going to be have so to do that. We have to do it. Immediately. Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do it. Next Thanks, time we Courtney. see us. Thank Thanks, guys. You. <laughs>